Jambo Rafiki. I'm Elizabeth from Kasiwa82 and I hope you are doing really well. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. I post two videos a week. On Tuesdays, I talk about books and all things reading. And on Fridays, I talk about journals and all things creative play. As always, those playlists will be linked for you up above as well as down below. So what I do for my reading wrap-ups is as opposed to do a monthly wrap-up, I tend to do recent read wrap-ups just because I feel like that helps me check in on a more regular basis with the books that I'm reading. So first let me talk about what a great reading year I've had so far and I hope you have too. The Invisible Cities Project, and there'll be links to that down below, is a year-long challenge reading translated fiction from around the world and we pick three books or three countries every month to read from. On the screen, I will post the covers of the books that I, had, I read for January's uh, challenge, and I have already filmed a video to that talking about those books, and I will link that for you up above as well as down below. I've also done a quick mini review on the comics that I read, and that will also be linked for you up above as well as down below. So let's now go ahead and talk about the books that are not in those current wrap-ups. So first, as always, let me just bring up my um, Goodreads account here. As always, what I do is I talk about the books from my least favorite to my most favorite. So let's start with the first one. The first one is The Fire Never Goes Out. It's a memoir in pictures by Noelle Stevenson. I gave this two and a half stars. Noelle Stevenson is the author of the comic Nimona. I enjoyed that as well. Now, what this is, it's, it's, do you remember, and maybe people do that still, like back in the day when every year around Christmas time or at the end of the year, you sent out a letter to kind of your network, your family, friends, giving them an update of here's what's happened in your life or your family's life. That's what this memoir collection felt like. It was kind of, I think, six or eight years of the author's life. And I know she had created these initially as blog posts, keeping her friends and family and her fan base updated as to what was going on with her. It was good. It wasn't great. And I was expecting more. So this is a teen book. And I, and I appreciated the author's exploration of just her creative journey, journey as well as um, she tackles um, depression and just issues around mental health, I think, in a way that if you've never read about them might be, you know, a good entry point. I just wanted more. When, when you, you know, it, I felt like reading those Christmas um, letters that come out at the end of the year, you want a deeper dive in those, in those stories. And, and if you're going to write a memoir, I, I just want more. I, I understand why the author held some of those things back. But if you're going to write a memoir, in my opinion, either dive deep or don't go do it at all. Just as it's my own personal preference, I, I felt like this kind of skimmed the surface and and in some ways it was kind of low risk because she had already published these already on her blog. So two and a half stars. I liked it. Uh, it's it's more of an illustrated memoir as opposed to a, a classic graphic novel. Um, you know, it, I, if you are a fan of the author, I think you will like it. I uh, The author is queer and part of this uh, memoir is kind of her coming to... Uh, terms with her sexuality and what I did like is you know the, there is kind of the, the the author finding someone that she connects with and and so I wish that couple well I wish the author well but in terms of actually a book for me to read as an adult reader two and a half stars next up we have the Emperor's Soul which is part of the Elantris um, series part of the Cosmere by Brandon Sanderson I listened to this audio uh, really well narrated by Angela Lynn. I gave this one three stars. So Brandon Sanderson has a huge following. If you read any fantasy, he's kind of a household name in the fantasy genre. I've tried reading several of his books and there's something about his work that doesn't work really well for me. So Mistborn, right? I mean, that's, I mean, he's got the Way of King series now, but Mistborn was the original trilogy. Everybody says, hey, go take a look at that series. You know, I know he writes both adult and, and um, YA, and I just find that his ideas work better for me than the actual execution. So I read Warbreaker, which there was some funny stuff in that one. I gave that two stars. I read Mistborn, the first book of The Final Empire. 
I think I gave that three stars. Just something about him doesn't jive with me. So this particular story, The, the Emperor's Soul, Soul, is a short story, kind of like a novella length story, actually. And what it is, is about there is this forger who can actually use magic to create things that are fake, right? The whole world, the things in this particular world are not real. They're all, they all use magic as a way to create forgeries that, that make you think that they are real, but they're not. I don't want to say too much more because part of the reveal of how the story unfolds is part of the fun. As always, in my opinion, Sanderson's world building is stronger than his actual character development. So I really like the world building in here. I like the magic in here. I liked the main character, the protagonist being a young woman of color was kind of fun. But in terms of, you know, part of the Cosmere, yeah, you know, I liked it. I, I enjoyed it while, while I was reading it. But if you were to ask me the specifics of the story, it's a very short novella. There's a lot of it that just, you know, has faded away already. So I gave that one three stars. It's, it's one of my favorite Sandersons to date, though. I will say that. And that was also a YA. Next up, we have Pool by Ji Hyun Lee. Now, I hope I'm pronouncing the author's name correctly. This, and I, I will insert images from this book here so you can take a look at it. This is a wordless picture book. Now, one of the things that I really appreciated about this book, it's written for kids, right? So it's a picture book. But it's kind of an all ages book as well because there are no words. There is something really magical about a picture book that is wordless because it, it the story unfolds depending on what's happening in your own mind. And I think that's one of the really great um, things about a wordless picture book. There are several that I would highly recommend as well. So if you're curious, let me know. But this one, what I really like, this, the basic story is you've got some shy kids. It's a really shy boy who comes to a public pool and then the pool is crowded. And what happens is he makes a friend and they kind of create this magical world in the water. The art, as you can see, is lovely. I really like the muted palette used here because a lot of kids' book tends to be really, really colorful. This one has got like a nice muted palette and I appreciated it for what it was. There's, um, it's, it's finding community that, that fits what you're looking for and not necessarily doing what everybody else is doing. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, of developing friendships and, and, you know, like I said, finding your people that I appreciated about this one. So I gave this one three stars as well. Short stories. As I said at the beginning of the year, one of the goals I have for 2021 is to actually read six short story collections because I find that it's taken me a long time to appreciate what short stories bring to the table. And in the Invisible, Invisible Cities project, I read a short story collection from Argentina, which I thought was one of the best short story collections I've read, actually. So I wanted to just continue that momentum. So this is the um, Out of Line. It's Women on the Verge of a Breakthrough. It's one of the Amazon Original Stories collection. And it's by seven authors that we have all probably heard of, right? It's got Roxanne Gay, Cheryl Strayed, um, Emma Donahue, Lisa Coe, Margaret Cutskill, Kate Atkinson. So pretty high hitters, high you know household names when it comes to literature in, in, in the bookish world. The thing about these stories is they're, they are all kind of all over the place. I don't want to say too much about them because part of, I would highly recommend actually not reading the blurbs. So when I went into these, um, I, I listened to them cold. I knew the author and I knew the narrator because I listened to these on audio. And I do recommend these on audio as well. On my Goodreads uh, page, I have reviewed each one of these stories and I've given them a, a star rating in case you're curious. So you can go take a look at that and always, as always, my Goodreads account is linked down below. Come there and say hi. So I have a two-star story. I have two four-star stories and the rest kind of fell somewhere in between. The, the stories are kind of interesting in that they all center around a woman. And this woman, you know, the, the world is, is a certain way and then something kind of happens and they, and they as, as the, the, the title says, they have, they have some kind of breakthrough. So some of them are realistic fiction. I think a lot of them actually are dystopian fiction. And 
I liked it. I, as I said earlier, I like some of the stories better than others. After reading them, I went back when I was putting my reviews into Goodreads, I read the blurbs and as I said, they spoil what's happening in those blurbs. So my recommendation would be don't look at the blurbs if you're going to read these, these stories. They're all really short. On audio, I think the longest one was an hour and 30 minutes, something along those lines. So you, you get them through them really quickly. I kind of did one a day until I finished um, the collection. I liked it. I didn't love it. I was expecting to really, really love this series, right? So Kate Atkinson, I mean, these are some of the authors that I have read. I think there's only uh, a couple of authors of whose work I have not read here. The two favorites of mine was the one by Roxanne Gay and the one by Mary Gates Gateskill. Is that how you pronounce her name? Gatskill? So those are the two that I enjoyed the most. I, I recommend this series three stars. The next up I have is another no uh, novella. It's called A Dead Jinn in Cairo, and it's by P. Jelly Clark. Now, this is a novella trilogy. I happen to have found the first book on audio at Hoopla, which is one of the, the audio uh, collections or, or um, services my library subscribes to. And I really enjoyed this one. It's set in 19, uh, early 1900s Cairo, Egypt, and... You know, it, it's Cairo if the British hadn't come because they are jinn and supernatural beings on the streets of Cairo. So on the good, on the plus side, they kept, you know, the, the British and colonialists away from Egypt. On the negative side, not all these supernatural beings are good, as one can imagine. So I really enjoyed this collection. I mean, this particular novella, it, it reads really fast. It's got a... A, so the, the, the novella opens up with there is a dead supernatural being on a couch that's naked and this cop, this woman cop, is looking at that dead body and we proceed from there. I am planning on reading the other two novellas in this series. Uh, like I said, it's just really fun. It's just um, the world building is good. The, the themes explored are good, right? So what, what does... Um, power look like and in whose hands it, you know people who think that they have an idea of how they can make a better the world a better place you could either call them a visionary or a madman right so there's two ways of looking at that anyway i enjoyed this one i listened to the audio which is really wonderfully read by Sohela el atar and um highly recommend this series i'll be looking at this one uh, following up with this one as well and these i give this one four stars Next up, I have Winter, which is the Seasonal Quartet Number no. 2 by Ali Smith. I listened to the audiobook by Melody Grove. Now, as I've said before, I'm reading the Ali Smith Seasonal Quartet with a group, and um, the group is headed up by Sarah at Hardcover Hearts. So I'll leave her link to her channel down below. And so the, the thing about Ali Smith is that I had thought I was going to love her. It turns out I do love her. It took me a while to learn how to read her books. So Winter's so the, the second installment in that seasonal quartet. And on the, on the surface, it's a relatively simple story. You've got this guy who's going home for Christmas and he breaks up with his girlfriend right before he goes home for the holidays. And so what he decides to do is just ask a woman he meets at a bus stand to pretend to be his girlfriend and go home with him. On the surface, that's a very rom-com kind of tagline, right? This is nothing like a rom-com. Ali, as, as in her previous book, Autumn, she does such a good job of just, we jump back and forth in time. We, she takes you through so many different, um, she explores so many different themes. She does not hold your hand. So a lot of times with Ali Smith's book, I think is if you're looking for a straightforward narrative, um, and a plot line that you can kind of hold on to, she is not the author for you. I have learned to appreciate what she does, which is essentially she just throws a whole bunch of stuff down. And as I said in my group, I'm skipping from rock to rock, trusting that she's going to take me somewhere. And she does. She explores what it means to be an insider versus an outsider. She explores what it means to be um, 
a family that's fractured and, and why did you get fractured and how sometimes an outsider looks at something in a way and brings people together in a way that you cannot do from the inside looking out. The value of outsiders. So Ali very much talks about, you know, how art imitates life, imitates art and how we can learn from art. She explores the idea of storytelling why there's why storytelling is important why there um it's important who gets to tell a story and the value of stories how um we connect with each other in terms of the stories that we share that people are not multi dimension i mean a single single dimensional they are multifaceted that you're going to have to take the whole kitten caboodle caboodle I really love that she does not give us easy answers. And yet every time I read her book, I've read three of them now, and I'll be talking about the next one in this quartet and the next wrap up. She just makes me think a whole bunch of thoughts. And that's one of the things I love. Like, you know, she puts some questions out there, but she does not give you the answers. She just trusts you, the reader, to do the work to get to the answers. I really, really like this one. This one got four stars for me. Again, the audio is by Mel Melody Grove, and I recommend listening to her on audio because one of the things about a book that does not have a straightforward narrative thrust is it almost feels like someone's telling you a fairy tale. And it, it very much feels like the oral traditions. And listening to this, I think, works in, in some ways much better than reading, even though I think she'd be excellent to go back and read as well because on a sentence-by-sentence -sentence level... She's got some of the most amazing writing that I have read. I have read, and it's just she's fantastic. So I'll be continuing on with I think all of her books. I think I might have found a new favorite author um, with this read along. And finally, my first five star read of the year. I am I am so surprised I, I can't even tell you. So this is Dune by Frank Herbert. This is the first book in the original Dune trilogy. And I listened to this on audio. It's read by Simon Vance and a full cast audio narration in my Goodreads account. And in the links down below, I will list all the narrators out for you. I was really skeptical about this, right? Because classic sci-fi slash fantasy tend to have tropes that, that, don't, that don't stand up well in modern day. And this is, this is one of those classic sci-fi fantasy slash sci-fi, you know, fantasy sci-fi sci-fi books. And... The reason it popped up to the top of my list is, of course, the new adaptation that's coming out, right? So, as many of you, I prefer to read the book before I watch the adaptation. and Because I don't want that, that character's face in my head as I'm reading the book. So I even stayed away from looking at a lot of the trailers and stuff like that until I finished this one. This is such a great story. It's, it's essentially set on the planet of Arrakis, which is a desert uh, planet and on this planet there is this spice called melange which is mined on this planet that the entire galaxy wants because it prolongs life and it keeps you young and um, and vigorous right kind of like the holy grail if you will the the story centers around the house of, of atreides and um, there is this young kid paul he's about 15 16 i think when we meet him and his father is given this planet to govern. On the other side, we've got the Harkonnens, which is a different house, and there is basically these house battles. And very quickly, what happens is there is a there is betrayal. There is, um, you know, you you think things are going to go one way and they don't go that way. The story is really really fun. I was genuinely surprised because that was the other thing. I'm like, oh gosh, I'm a 15 or 14 year old boy that I'm going to be following along with. There's a lot of magic in this book as well. So it's it's sci-fi in that it's set on, you know, fake planets and all of that kind of good stuff. And there's, you know, uh, ship, spaceships and things like that. However, there's a very strong magical component to this. There's, there's a prophecy that, you know, foresees this guy, Paul, showing up on, on Arrakis. And so there's kind of like a messiah, um, chosen one trope in this whole story as well. I also really like how the story is told to us. We have kind of a future voice telling us about something that happened in the past, and then we're following Paul and this cast of characters. His mother is also a key character in the story, Jessica. So it's kind of following the story as it unfolds. 
you've got the people who live on Arrakis, you've got these people who come from outside, it's the classic, there's native population, there are foreigners coming in, there's colonialism overtones here, and what happens? Loved it, I loved every minute of this book, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I am planning on listening to the entire trilogy, the first three books in this series, because I think after the first three, he continued writing, and then his son continues writing, there's tons and tons of these books in this series right now. Um, I'm planning on getting through, hopefully, the, the first trilogy by the end of this year, because I am so surprised at how much I enjoyed this one. Highly recommended, would love to know if you have and what you thought about it. So, I, as always, I'm currently reading a whole bunch of different books. I will talk about them when I finish them. I would love to know what you're reading. I would love to know if you have read any of these books or what you thought about them. And if you disagreed with my comments or actually you thought I missed something completely and have a totally different opinion on a book that I did not love as much. So until I talk to you next time, happy reading. Bye.